Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. We have two games to go in the Premier League. We currently sit top of the table with three points between us and Arsenal. Four points between us and Manchester City in third. This is absolutely massive. We could win the Premier League title today. So in the previous episode we ended up beating Barcelona in the Champions League semi-final of course. And we have Burnley away from home and Norwich at home in today's episode that takes us to the premier league table there we are three points above our arsenal and four points above manchester city arsenal on the other hand have spurs away from home and palace at home which is definitely a much tougher fixtures list than we have manchester city have liverpool away and southampton at home so they both have a difficult game in spurs and liverpool whereas we have norwich who have done very very well this season they're currently sitting seventh and Burnley have had a decent season as well, currently sitting in 11. So neither side are going to be a complete walk in the park. But I've got I've got a strong feeling that we are about to win the Premier League title. Let's get to the first match. So the first game is Burnley away from home. And this is how we're going to line up. Jordan Pickford in goal, Bella Kochap, Batella and Onjean in the defence with Dodo and Pellegrini being our wing-backs. Ronaldo Sanchez and Mariba in the centre of midfield with Danny Olmo playing in behind Erling Haaland and Sebastiano S. Besito. We could win in this game quite easily. You know, Spurs and Liverpool could do us massive favours against Manchester City and Arsenal, and that could be that. But if we win the day, Manchester City are definitely out of it. And it's I think it's crazy that we've ended up getting to this point. We haven't been unbelievable this season in the league. We've definitely had periods where we weren't performing that well, but Arsenal have dropped off like a stone in the second half of the season. And we have definitely been able to take advantage. Now in terms of the side Burnley will be putting out. The likes of Petkovic I'm aware of. A Croatian striker. Um, they've got a decent side but nobody like really crazy. He's quite a good young English central defender. But you know we've definitely got the better side on paper. Can we handle the nerves though? This is massive. Let's see how we'll get on. The very first highlight of the game comes two and a half minutes in. It's Burnley coming down this left-hand side with Ante Rebic. It gets clear, but Angeleri picks it up, gets the ball in. It's Petkovic or oh, Rebic somehow. <laughs> oh, God, this is going to be an absolute nightmare. I can tell it already. But Burnley with a corner played in by Barrios. It's played in. We managed to get a clear by Batella. Ante Rebic keeps the ball alive, though, so the highlight will continue. Please, lads, please just get your foot on this ball and just boot it. First 10 minutes or so haven't been overly kind to us yet. So we went back to a positive team mentality against the attack and one we started with. And Burnley come forward again 12 minutes in with Bamba on this right-hand side. Great challenge by Luca Pellegrini. I did have visions of a penalty there. I'm not uh, sure about you guys, but I wasn't really feeling that challenge. But thankfully, he managed to get away with it. So we keep possession in the midfield. Mariba and Danny Olmo knocking it about quite nicely. Dodo's... A little bit left on his own, but he can do his man and he can get to the byline. No, he can't. He gets dispossessed and Burnley can clear. The ball finds its way back to Erling Haaland, though, on this right-hand side. And the highlight still continues. Pellegrini picks up the ball on the left. Mariba, some Pellegrini, come on, Pellegrini. Luca Pellegrini puts us 1-0 up 13 minutes in. His 14th goal of the season from left wing back, which is absolutely unbelievable. <sighs> we take the lead. Three points is looking good <laughs> and too early it's too early but it's looking all right we'll uh we'll have to keep an eye on the latest scores uh around the other games if arsenal don't win a deer and we do that's it it's over absolutely over in terms of the other fixtures arsenal is still drawing nil nil as are manchester city so we'll keep an eye on that throughout the rest of the game and hope that the other teams can do us a favor but with 30 minutes gone we've certainly come up more into this game after the first 10 minutes or so Let's see how the rest of it goes. Another highlight now. Danny Olmo with a corner. Nick Pope ends up collecting it eventually. Uh, is it going to be a Burnley break? I think it's going to be. They've got a lot of men there. But Pellegrini does well to track back and get back in defence. The highlight continues with Dodo on this right-hand side. He gets past his man. He whips the ball in. Mareba to Pellegrini. Hits a post. Slides down. <laughs> Slightly challenging. It's still 1-0. Probably should have been 2-0 there. But unfortunate. Danny Olmo plays the ball in from the corner. And that's cleared. That's probably going to be it. Another highlight now shortly before half time. Only three minutes left in the half. Dodo picks up the ball beautifully and goes for a goal. But he hasn't got the finishing ability. Luca Pellegrini has. Another free kick this time by Danny Olmos. Claimed by the keeper. Only injury time remaining in the first half. 
We need to just get to half time at 1-0, boys. No silly business. Dodo coming down this right-hand side. He hasn't really got many options, so he has to turn back to Renato or Sanchez inside. Danny Olmo goes for goal. And Danny Olmo gets his seven. He's only got seven goals this season, Danny Olmo, but he's got about 25 assists. He has been absolutely superb for us. Um, he's played a lot behind the strikers as Jean-Pierre's form sort of dipped. And he's definitely made the most of it. And he's he's probably been my favourite player all season. So seven seven goal of the season, 2-0 up, going into half time. That might be the three points. Liverpool are getting beat by Manchester City though. But Spurs are beating Arsenal. That is the result we need to take an eye on. If we were to win a dear Man City's result, it does not matter. Arsenal's result is the only one that we care about. And at 1-0 Rashford giving Spurs the lead. Spurs are going to give us the Premier League title. I can feel it. But we'll kick off for the second half. No changes at half time required. Everyone's doing okay in terms of fitness and stuff. Um, probably about 60-65 will look to make a sub. Highlight though, it's still continuing and Erling Haaland, I, I thought this highlight was over, I was just waiting for it to finish, but we end up getting our third goal of the game, Erling Haaland's 24th goal of the season, another assist for Dodo, who is another one who creates an awful lot for our strikers, and we've done incredibly well here, Dodo slips the ball down that right hand side, Erling Haaland with a clinical finish, and a 3-0 now, that's as good as game over. I know you didn't see it, but it's still 1-0 in the Spurs Arsenal game. Um, why isn't this giving me options to shrink? Never mind. I don't really care. Where is it? Where is it? I need to keep an eye. I need to keep an eye on the Spurs game. Where am I? Am I being crazy? Are they just not showing me that on purpose? Right, we'll ignore. Whatever happened in the highlight, I have no idea. But it's Burnley coming forward now with Angeleri on this left hand side. Barrios, Gilmore, Jordan Pick. Jordan Pickford has been one of the main reasons why we're winning this league. Oh, Jack Butland has been fine for the number of seasons we had him, but Jordan Pickford's that just extra level, uh, keeping goals out. You know, we might have conceded there on another day, and it might have ended up bearing fruit over the course of a season. But Jordan Pickford has definitely been massive for. I mean, um, Burnley's just scored. Bruno Petkovic with 25 minutes remaining. There's nothing to panic about. We're still winning three-one, but um, let's make some changes. Luke Pellegrini can come off for Josh Tymon. Um, Reese James is out for the rest of the season, so he's not going to get any more game time. Esposito's not having the greatest one, so we'll get Wayne Knowles on for him. And we'll save our final sub for desperate measures. But the Spurs-Arsenal game is still 1-0. As there is another highlight, Wayne. Wayne Knowles. He's got 21 goals this season, Wayne Knowles. He is an absolute superstar. His attributes don't show it. But his goal-scoring ability has been unrivaled. He's absolutely fantastic, and I love the man. Absolutely great ball over the top. First time finish on his weak foot. Half volley. To beat the keeper from that angle is absolutely unbelievable, and he deserves a knighthood. With 10 minutes remaining or so, Spurs Arsenal is still 1 0 to Spurs. Uh, I mean, if I was an Arsenal fan, I'd be absolutely raging. Spurs being the ones who's cost us the Premier League title. But it looks like that's going to be it, boys. Four minutes remain. There's no way Burnley are getting three goals in this time, or is there? <laughs> no, there's not. There's absolutely not. Danny Olmo has picked up a knock, and we are going to take him off for Jean Pierre. Um, but the highlight still continues with Danny Olmo coming down the left-hand side. He can get himself off now. And that's it, lads. I think we have just won the Premier League title. Come on. Bella Kotchap down the right-hand side. Back to Dodo. Whips the ball in. Wayne Knowles tries to get his second. He's absolutely hungry for it. But come on, ref. Just blow the full-time whistle. And there we are, boys. We are the Premier League champions. Now, I'm not sure how many seasons this has been. It's been four or five. Whatever it's been. But Sheffield United have done an absolute number this season. We've performed well above expectations. The boys, I mean, I think we've got a title challenging squad anyway. So the quality of the player, probably under any manager, would have been challenging for the title. But we have wrapped it up. We have got our first Premier League title. And I couldn't be happier. It's absolutely fantastic, the lads. The, where we've come from, 19th in the Premier League. Sheffield United was definitely one of the more difficult challenges in the Prem. And they've done absolutely fantastic. 37 games played. We've only lost twice. Brighton and Liverpool, the only teams to defeat us. And ugh, fantastic, fantastic stuff. So just getting the congratulation messages coming in. The board delighted with Club Vision Progress. Uh, four years ahead of schedule of winning silverware. Uh, it wasn't even part of the five-year plan to actually win the Premier League. So that didn't really get... Um, that didn't really give us any props. We were 6-1 to favourites for the league, actually. So I think we were about 5th or 6th favourite. 
for the league title this season. Sheffield United board, obviously happy with the Premier League division win. Man City dominated for a while. Liverpool have had the last three. But now we take this one. Medals for the Premier League winners. Everybody fully deserves it. Even Reese James, who's only started one game for us since signing in January. Um, Daniel Moy injured. We knew about that. Roma, whatever. Luca Pellegrini was our man of the match, as he often is. Um, absolutely fantastic stuff. So that leaves us with one game to go of the season in the Premier League. I'm not going to bring you that. Um, it seems pretty pointless at this point to go over that. Um, but I will bring you some of the end of season stuff and we'll discuss the squad before next episode where we play Inter Milan in the Champions League final. So we've just played our final game in the Premier League this season and we got a 1-0 win against Norwich. Taylor Kerra getting the goal in the 68th minute. And this is how the final Premier League table looks. Sheffield United are of course Premier League champions. Liverpool actually ended up finishing in second position ahead of both Arsenal and Manchester City who well and truly bottled it towards the end of the season. But they get Champions League spots anyway. Newcastle, Leeds and Brighton are the relegated sides. Brighton... One of the only teams to beat us this season. 2-0. Aye. Well, it doesn't matter. We won the league. Erling Haaland ended up getting top goal scorer. Danny Olmo, highest average rate. And Danny Olmo, 22 assists this season in the Premier League. And we've got a few messages to come through from our record load number of league defeats. Only two this season. It's absolutely fantastic. Olmo's 22 assists is a new record. Olmo has been named a Footballer of the Year winner. And absolutely thoroughly deserved. He's been my favourite player by a long shot. Now I've seen him actually develop better than this. So he probably isn't at his highest potential. He can't possibly be on FM20. But if you want to get him and use him. You're going to have to do so now. Because once the January update comes. You've got no chance. <laughs> He's already moved clubs in real life. Danny Olmo claims players player of the year. Erling Haaland gets top goal scorer of the year. Ahead of Vinicius Jr. And Lucas and Metcher. I've never seen him. He's a pretty average striker. But he's done very well. Haaland named as players young player of the year. Because he's only 23. Williams named manager of the year, of course. George plays to whatever. Jez George, our director of football, has plays that I've just won. And our team of the year, it's basically us with a couple of Man City players and David De Gea. Our defence, Renato Sanchez and Daniel Olmo, Erling Holland, and Wayne, Wayne Knowles gets in team of the year. This guy is an absolute gem. And despite looking at him, his stats, you wouldn't think he would perform that well. But he's got 21 goals in 25 starts with 20 substitute appearances, 6 assists. He has had plenty of game time this season. And he has developed okay, but um, I'm more impressed with the performances he's managed to put out with them limited stats. So I think that's pretty much it for the end of season stuff until next time. Um, obviously, our club vision is looking absolutely fantastic. We've, we've made the most of set pieces, apparently. Uh, playing possession football, playing attacking football, entertaining high press. Um, not signing anyone over the age of 30. I haven't done that board, so you can start judging me on that. Uh, work within wage will just been fine. Minimum four-year contracts for first-team players. I think I've been doing that. I don't think I don't see a reason why I wouldn't. Um, but we have smashed every single objective this season. And even if next episode isn't a go well, we leave Sheffield United in such a good spot. And we will be finding out what they do when we actually leave the club. So looking forward to the next episode. It's going to be the Champions League final against Inter Milan. If, if you weren't aware, this signals the end of this series. Champions League final win or lose is the trigger for us to move on to something new. And if we can take Sheffield United to win the Premier League and the Champions League in the same season, that would be absolutely unbelievable. But if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.